Hello friends, today we are going to talk about management of badly broken teeth, cases which frequently report to you in your day-to-day -day clinical practice. Sometimes you really wonder, can I save these teeth? Well, the answer is a definite yes, and it lies in performing a predictable post in court. The success of which lies in what we call as the monoblock effect. So whenever you are thinking of managing the badly broken teeth, the first thing that comes to your mind is the fabrication of a cast post and core. In order to perform this Herculean task of cast post and core, you push yourself through an exhaustive journey of first making the post space preparation, then making a wax pattern. And when doing this one intraorally, it is perhaps one of the most difficult things to do in the whole dental practice. But somehow you manage. Then investing your precious wax pattern followed by its casting. Of course, many of us would use the lab support for investing in casting procedure. Well, once the cast post and core is ready, you happily recall the patient, expecting an ideal fitting of your cast post and core. But guess what? Your casting does not fit. And whom do we blame for that? Of course, the lab technician. But deep inside, we know that the technical errors are perhaps a nobody's fault. But friends, at the end of the day, who is at harm? Well, it's you and your patient. We thereby start thinking that post and core procedure is too difficult, a very lengthy procedure, a hell of time consuming. And since the lab procedure is involved, there are casting defects. And of course, it's a technique sensitive procedure. Last but not the least, since we are using a metal, there is a high risk that the rigid metal will eventually fracture the resilient dentine in the root. Having felt all these complications, we land up having nightmares when it comes to fabricating a post and core for management of badly broken teeth. So how about doing predictable post and core without any technical issues, everything chair side in just 20 minutes. So ladies and gentlemen, here I am to help you out for laying the strong foundation of fiber post and core for the management of extensively damaged teeth in day, your day-to-day -day clinical dental practice. Three most crucial things in endodontic therapy are number one, thorough disinfection of the root canal system, secondly, a perfect apical seal, and finally, an ideal leak proof coronal seal. Of course, there is no point in performing endodontic therapy of a tooth which cannot be provided with a sound coronal restoration thereafter, like the first molar on this slide. After root canal treatment, a tooth can be restored by three means. One, by composite resin restorations which can be direct or indirect. Secondly, by the use of full coverage crowns. And thirdly, by the use of post and core to be followed by full coverage crowns. Well, in order to explain post and core, it can be easily described as a dental restoration which is used to sufficiently build a tooth structure for future restoration with a crown, when the existing tooth structure is not enough to properly retain a crown. Therefore, post and cores are referred to as foundation 
restorations. What is the exact function of a post? Well, a post is used for the retention of the core material. Post helps in general to stabilize and secure the core material. Before we proceed further, there is one very important thing which needs to be understood very clearly and that is how the endodontic military teeth are different from the normal healthy vital teeth. The biggest reason why endodontically treated teeth fracture more as compared to vital teeth is that there is a change in area where the forces concentrate during mastication. If you look closely at the photoelastic modulus image, the one on the left side shows a vital tooth in which the forces get concentrated on the thickest portion of the crown, which can very well bear the forces without crumbling down. However, the image on the right side depicts that in a tooth with access opening, the forces of mastication are concentrating at the CE junction, which is a very weak area. And thus, such a tooth frequently breaks at the CE junction. The second reason why root canal treated teeth break is due to the loss of moisture in these teeth. Also, a healthy vital tooth is in a so-called pre-stressed state and is thus better able to withstand the masticatory forces. After the tooth preparation, this state is destroyed. Thus, there are more chances of fracture. We need to assess the tooth pre-operatively before proceeding for post and core very thoroughly. This all includes Respiratory evaluation, endodontic evaluation, periodontal evaluation, and aesthetic evaluation. When performing restorative evaluation, one can simply refer to a very simple classification given by Smith and Schumann, who described a tooth to have a minimal coronal damage in case only one cusp is lost in addition to the axis opening moderate if two cusps are lost and significant if more than two cusps are lost due to caries. One must assess the endodontic therapy of the involved tooth very critically before proceeding for the post and core. There is no point in performing a post and core in a tooth with poor endodontic treatment. Either you must redo the root canal treatment if possible or defer the case. The periodontal evaluation is the one which is quite often neglected, especially in terms of the biological width. Under all circumstances, the biological width of 2 mm must be maintained, otherwise there will always be bleeding and spongy gums. Biological width can be defined as the soft tissue which is attached to the tooth coronal to the crest of the alveolar bone. Anatomical position of the tooth in the arch must also be given due consideration. For example, the premolars and the molars need extra attention as they bear the mesticatory forces to a very larger extent. What are the indications of post and core in anterior teeth? The first and the foremost indication is the extensively damaged crown of the tooth, either due to caries or due to trauma. An ideal case for post and core in anterior teeth would be the one which has both mesial and distal caries. And in that case, you make an access opening, eventually leading to only a thin shell remaining. Also, malaligned teeth, which need change in the axial inclination of teeth, are also ideal cases for post and core. Of course, needless to say that in such vital cases, intentional endodontic therapy would be required. Indications for post and core in posterior teeth would be similar to those in the anteriors. That is, 
extensively damaged grounds and a requirement of change in the axial inclination of the teeth. Let's talk about the contraindications for post and core. The contraindications of post and core teeth include the teeth which have severe root curvature, teeth with persistent peripyphal lesion, teeth with poor bone support and the ones with poor ground to root ratio. And of course, if one does not know how to perform this procedure, one must learn it wisely before it is attempted onto the patient.